So welcome for this session. That's advanced taxation. I want us to look at taxation of banks. Now, on a taxation of banks, eh? you did banks or uh, insurance in your levels. So how do the banks operate? Or what are the major sources of income for the banks? And what are the major sources of expense for the bank? Now, for the banks, they are financial institution offering financial services to their clients. And they operate under the principle eh, of pulling off the resources from those individual or from those yeah, individual. When you talk about individual, you're talking about an individual person or a company eh, yeah, who have surplus amount and then they lend that amount back. They channel that amount back to the clients with insufficient balance. And for the banks, what are their major source of income? Their major source of income, their major, not sources, their major source of income are the interest on loans. Then, what are their major expense? Also to the bank, their major operating expense are the interest on customer deposit. Interest on customer uh, deposits. So what does that mean? That means loan to a bank it's an asset because an asset gives rise to an income. Then the amount the customer deposits to the bank to the bank that amount becomes a liability. So that one becomes a liability uh, to the bank. So that's what about taxation of banks and uh, uh, that's what about the general aspect of a uh, bank. Their major income are the interest income their major expense are the interest expense on customer uh, deposit. So I want us to do a question. December 2011, question 3A. December 2011, question 3A. The question is already in your notes. In case you don't have the past paper, if you don't have the past paper, the question is already in your notes. I've indicated the question and swear us as the solution. So let's do that question. Let's do that question. And then another thing, uh, you should not be copying the notes, eh? because actually once you know, once you become an online student, eh, you will be getting the videos as well as as the notes. So everything I'll be teaching, even the illustration, I'll be doing the solution already in your notes. So you don't have to reason while you write, because in that case you not get anything. Eh? So we are told that the following is a statement of comprehensive income for Pesa Commercial Bank Limited for the year ended that first of December 2010. So we have the incomes. Uh -huh. We have interest on loans and advances to customer. That's a, a general. Uh, that's a operating income. So it's taxable. Loyalty income, net of the holding tax. Remember, we see that loyalty income. There are specified sources of income. Uh -huh. Then we have interest on treasury bill. That one is a taxable income. Interest on placement with other bank. Taxable income. Fees and commission. Taxable income. Unrealized income from foreign exchange. What do we say about the unrealized income? And realized income, we see that they are non-taxable income. Then we have the profit on sale of furniture. Gain on sale of assets is also non-taxable income. Yeah, that's what we mentioned. So if you are not conversant with what, uh, those allowable, disallowable, taxable, and taxable, so kindly first of all go through the introduction to business income. That's why I've explained everything uh, bit by bit. Eh? Yeah, what are the taxable income, non-taxable income, allowable expenses, disallowable expenses, specified sources of income, etc. Then we have the expenses. Expenses we have staff cost, occupancy expenses, impairment loss on goodwill. We see that impairment is a disallowable expense. Deposition, disallowable expense. Deposit protection fund contribution, that one. There was a time deposit protection fund contribution used to be allowable expenses, but nowadays it's a disallowable expense. Then, uh, you see this one is just a contribution. Eh? Yeah. Then interest on customer deposit, that's allowable. Interest on deposit from other bank, allowable. Director's remuneration, allowable. Auditor's fee for the current year is allowable. Then we have under provision for previous year. Now, expense for the previous year is a disallowable expense in this financial year. And then you see it's also a provision. Remember you see that all provisions are disallowable expenses. Operating risk expense, that one is allowable. Loss on disposal of equipment. We see that if you sell an asset at a gain, that income will not be taxed. Therefore, if you sell at a loss, that amount will not be allowed. So therefore, loss on disposal of equipment is a disallowable expense. In short, disallowable expense, they are expenses which does not relate to day-to-day -day operation and those expenses which are non-cash, such, uh, such as provision, such as depreciation, such as impairment. 
Finance cost, that's the interest expense, that's allowable. Provision for banded out for debts. Remember we say that bad debt should only be allowable if they are specific. General provision, they are disallowable. Then provision for interest in suspense, that one is a disallowable expense. Then you have the net profit. So now, once you have that statement, you ask yourself, remember you say that, on a taxable aspect, we have a complete record and an incomplete record. Now, based on this question, can you ask yourself, is it a complete or incomplete record? Yeah, this one is a complete record because you're given income and expenses as well as the profit. So this one is a complete record. Now we say that in case of a complete record, you apply the bottom-up approach. You start from the reported profit, then going upward. Additional information number one. Staff cost includes, number one, provision for salary increase, that is disallowable. It's a provision. Pension contribution, that's allowable. Staff terminal cost, that's allowable. Provision for staff leave areas, it's a provision, therefore become a desirable expense. Number two, provision for interest in suspense related to performing loans, advanced to executive directors. Uh -huh. Number three, operating risk expenses relates to photocopy, uh, photocopier risk from a firm dealing in office supplies. Number four, director's remuneration in crude. Uh -huh. School fees for director's children, that one is a desirable expense. That's what you call a private expense. Yeah? You see, it's school fees for director's children, not for the director, but for the director's children. So that means it's a private and a personal expense. A personal expense, we said it's a desirable expense for the company. Then we have client entertainment allowance. We are entertaining our client. If you're entertaining our client, that's part of an operating expense. Therefore, it's allowable expense. Then we have passage for expatriate director. That one is allowable. Number five, provision for bad and doubtful debt comprise. So we are given the breakdown. We have specific, general, and the total. We have on 1st January 2010, that's the opening balance, the balance brought down. Then we have charge for the year. Now, in this case, for the income statement, we'll only be focused with the charge for the year. And for charge for the year, for example, we have the specific, which is 90. That 90 is allowable expense. Then general, the charge for the year, it's 7,200. That 7,200 becomes a disallowable expense. So what we need here is 72. You see, we are applying the concept of complete record. So we are adding back disallowable expenses. Eh? So in this case, we'll add back the general provision, which is 7,200. Then lastly, number six, capital allowance for the year was agreed at 8.4 million. A required. An adjusted statement of taxable income for the year ended that 1st of December 2010. Adjusted statement of uh, income statement. Eh? So how do we prepare that? So the name of the company is PESA Commercial Bank Limited. Computation of taxable profit or loss. for the year ended, that 1st of December, 2010. Yeah, I said that this one is a case of complete record, being a complete record, so you start with the reported profit, so, and we have the net profit, and net profit we have is an amount of 213 to 70, then you add back disallowable expenses. Now, when arriving on this profit, we have some expenses they are deducted, which they are not supposed to be deducted. So that's what we are adding back, desirable expense. And let's start with the first one, staff cost. Staff cost, let's go to note number one, additional information number one. Staff cost include, staff cost include, we had some desirables there. Number one, we have provision for salary increase. Provision for salary increase, an amount of 480. Also, you have provision for river areas. For river areas, an amount of 8680. Uh -huh. Then also, you had impairment of goodwill. 
impairment of goodwill. For the impairment of goodwill, we have an amount of 8,700. Also, we had depreciation. Depreciation was an amount of that 6,800. You add it back. Then we have the deposit protection fund. Yeah, deposit protection fund contribution. An amount of 10, uh, 360. Then we had audit fees hmm, for the previous year, the under provision for the previous year. Eh? And the amount was an amount of 400. Uh, then we had loss on disposal of equipment. Loss on disposal of equipment, an amount of 19. 640. Then we have provision for doubt of debts. Now we see that specific they are allowable. General provision they are disallowable. So in this case you only factor in the general. And that one is provided in note number 5. In note number 5 for the charge for the year uh, the general is an amount of 72. Uh -huh. Then we also had provision for interest in suspense. Provision for interest in suspense. Yeah. You see it's a provision. All provision are desirable expenses. An amount of 2400 Let's go to note number four. Note number four. Directors enumeration include the school fees for directors' children. Call fees for uh, directors, uh, children, an amount of 1600 So you add back all desirable expenses. Now, once you add back desirable expenses, then you see that you list allowable expenses never deducted. You list allowable expenses never deducted. And most of this one is only one, the capital allowances. So for the capital allowances, we have an amount of 84. Then you also raise, for the income, we had some income where, where some are specified, where some are non-taxable. So you eliminate non-taxable income, you also raise non-taxable income. Remember I had already given you the format. Eh? In case of a complete record, how do, you, uh, how do you come up with this format? You take the reported profit, add back to salary expenses, then you raise allowable expenses never deducted. You raise non taxable income as well as you raise the specified sources of income. Yeah. So that means of this net profit, we had some income which are included, which are not supposed to be taxed. That's what we are trying to eliminate. And in that case, what do we have? Number one, we had unrealized. Unrealized foreign exchange gain. Foreign exchange. Gain. And how much was that? That was an amount of 93.60. Also, you need to deduct profit on sale of furniture. Profit on sale of furniture. You see that gain on sale of non current assets is not taxable, an amount of 43.80. Then you also deduct specified sources of income or specific income in that case we had loyalty income yeah we had loyalty and loyalty was an amount of 95 and that's how you get what we call a taxable profit that's how you get the taxable now this taxable profit is what we call the profit from day to day operation eh? 295, 890. Now that's what you call the business income. 
Then once you have that, now you can also add back these specified sources of income. He said that specified sources of income, they are income which are taxable. It's only that they are specified. Eh? You add specific income, of, the, of which we had royalties. But in this case, we are told that royalties was net of withholding tax. The royalties were net of withholding tax. Now, if you uh, add it, uh, if you uh, add it here as 95, that means you'll be taxed again. So you have to take it back to gross. Eh? You have to take it back to gross. You see, in this case, we have deducted what we had added to eliminate that error. But in this case, when adding the taxable amount, you have to take it back to the gross because if you rate it as net, you'll be taxed again. Eh? So you'll take 9,500. Now note that royalty income, they are withholding tax is at the rate of 5%. Actually, withholding tax of most of the income is 5%. Eh? Except for the interest, the interest is 15%. Note that withholding tax is at the rate of 5%. Except for the interest, which is at the rate of 15%. Good. So therefore, you divide by 0 0.95. Or you can argue that 9500 is net, so therefore it's equivalent to 95%. What about 100? What about 100? And you'll get that the amount on gross was an amount of 10,000. So that's how we get the amount of adjusted taxable profit. So it will be an amount of 305, 890, 305, 890. Good, so that's how you answer part one. So let's go to part two of the question. Now part two of the question, you are told that, Assuming PESA Commercial Bank Limited taxable profit for the year ended that first December 2009, that's at the end of last financial year, was 560,000. Yeah. Calculate the final tax that was due on or before that year of June 2011. Calculate the final tax. Now, in short, the question is asking about the installment tax. And we say that installment tax is payable four times. And how determine the installment tax? We say that to get the installment tax, you take the previous year tax previous year tax, you multiply by 110%. This is 2010. How much was the tax for 2009? You already given the question. That assuming PESA Commercial Bank Limited taxable profit for the year ended that first December 2009 was 560. So you take 560,000, but this was, uh, this was not tax. This was the profit, taxable profit. So you have to multiply by 30% so that you can get the previous year tax. Let me repeat again. 560 million was previous year profit, taxable profit. But in this case, we want previous year tax. So you multiply by that percent to determine how much was the tax. Then you multiply by 110%. So how much will be the tax for this financial year? So we are supposed to, uh, it should be 184, 800. Then how is this amount paid? We say that payable on all on all, uh -huh, 20th April, 20th June, on or before 20th of September, on or 20th of December. And then here you see that you only pay 25%, that's a quarter, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. This is the amount, 184, 800. 184, 800, 184, 800, 184, 800. So that means they are supposed to have been paying 46, 200, 46, 200, 46, 200, 42, 600. That means by the end of the year 2010, they have already paid, they are supposed to have already paid 184, 800. That's what they are supposed to have already paid by that time. So that's what the question was asking, was asking about that. But now, this is not part of the question. How are they supposed to determine how much has to pay? You see, this tax you are supposed to have already paid before the year ends. Now, once the year ends, you prepare the financial statement for that period, then you determine how much was the actual tax liability. So therefore, how much was the actual tax liability for the period? You see, in this case, we have already prepared the financial statement and our taxable profit is 305,890. 
That's the tax of profit. You multiply by that, you determine the tax for that period. So for that period, they are supposed to pay an amount of 91,767. This is the tax for the period. But already they have paid withholding tax. Eh? You raise withholding tax. Eh? You see on royalties, they received an amount of 95. That means the gross was 10. If gross was 10 and they received 95, that means they had already paid uh, withholding tax an amount of 5,000. Sorry, 500. So that means the tax for that period should be 91,267. This is what they are supposed to pay at that period. But by the end of the year, they have paid a total installment tax of 184,800. So that means they have an overpayment. So an overpayment, what happens? You go and apply so that that profit should be carried forward. Don't apply for refund. KRI number one will not refund. Eh? So this amount, what happens? You carry it uh, forward. So that means this is the actual paid amount paid. You see, by the end of the year, they have already paid 184, 800. But amount payable for that period, they are only supposed to pay 91, 267. So that means there is tax refundable of how much? Uh, 93, 533. Tax refundable. But you are saying that most of it, uh, this one, okay, we call it tax refundable, but it will not be refunded. So this amount will be carried forward to be offset against the profit uh, for the coming, uh, for the tax expense for the coming period. So that's how you answer such question. So I want us still to try another illustration. You try another illustration. May 2017, question 2B. May 2017, question 2B. May 2017, question 2B. And we are told that the following information was obtained from the financial record of Mali Commercial Bank for the year ended that 1st of December 2016. Now just look at that question the way it is. You ask yourself, is it a complete record? Is it an incomplete record? Is it a complete? Is it an incomplete? So that one is, not, is a case of an incomplete record. Why is it an incomplete record? Because in this case, you are not given the income statement. You are not given income and expenses. So in case of an incomplete record, incomplete record will be given income, expenses, assets, liability, and equity. So given the mixture of that. Eh? So in this case, you are only concerned. Your major concern is only taxable income, allowable expenses. In short, it's income statement aspect only income and expenses then for the income know what you are taxable which are non-taxable expenses which are allowable which one are disallowable so now let's go through that uh -huh. so we have interest in advance now interest in advance uh, on advances eh? now that's what we call interest on loan and you see that interest on loan is a taxable income that's a major source of income so that's a taxable income contribution to deposit protection fund we are saying that that one is a disallowable expense operating lease rental allowable expense Interest on government security, that's an income. You see the government, okay, the bank, they relate it to the government. So on that, uh, if they buy government security, so on return they expect to receive back that interest. So to the bank, that one is an income. Yeah, interest on government security. Interest paid on deposit, that's an expense, which is a rubber. Interest on placement on other bank, can be an income, can be an expense. But in this year too, that interest on placement and bank balances. So that means, so it's also an income. Loss on disposal of collateral. Loss on disposal of collateral. Collateral, they are securities. For you to get a loan from the bank, you have to offer something as a security. So that means, in case you default, in case you default, eh, the bank, they use that security or that collateral to sell so that they can cover back their money. But in this case, they disposed at a loss. So you see, those security, they are part of day-to-day -day operation. So therefore, in case of any loss on that, it will be allowable expense since it's a day-to-day -day operation. It's not something that happens once. Eh? 
good. In case it was a gain on sale of collateral, it could be have been a taxable income. It's an income earned from day-to-day -day operations. Good. Mm -hmm. Then we have fees and commission expenses. That's an expense. Losses from investment in security. Losses in, uh, that one is a desirable expense. You see, investment in security. That means is the bank buying shares. So that one is not a day-to-day -day operation. No, 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 no. That one is a capital expenditure. In case of a loss on expenditure, that one is desirable. Purchase of equipment, that one will qualify for investment allowance. A depreciation, desirable expense. Transfer to statutory reserve. Now, transfer of reserve, that one goes to the statement of changes in equity. That one does not affect the income statement. Losses on stock brokerage, dealing. Losses on stock brokerage, dealing. This is not their this is not their day to day operation. So in case of loss, that one is desirable expense. Gain on foreign exchange dealing, that one is taxable income. We see that foreign exchange dealing. Now in case you have dollars, where do you exchange that amount? To the bank. So to the bank that means is your day to day operating income. So therefore, in case of a gain is a taxable income. Discount on bill purchased, that one is an income. Auditors and numeration, expense. Provision for ban and out of debt, disallowable, not unless it's a specific. Investment in government security, that's an asset. If invest in government security, that one is an asset. Bill receivable and for, correct, uh, for correction. Bills receivable. Receivable is a data. Data goes to the balance sheet. So therefore, does not affect the income statement. Guarantees and performance bond of balance sheet item does not affect the income statement. Interest accrued and paid. Now, interest paid, that one becomes an expense. Bill for correction, acceptance, endorsement, those are non balance sheet, uh, of balance sheet items. Rebate on bill discounted, that one is an income. Provision for taxation, we see that all expenses related to tax are desirable. General charge recovered, that's an income. Commission on exchange and brokerage, that one is still an income. Additional information, number one. Contribution to deposit protection fund include investment liberation surplus of 684, uh, 48. That one is irrelevant. Included in the transfer of settled sum is an amount paid for exchange and commission of 48. Yeah, included in the transfer of settled sum is an amount paid for exchange and commission of 48. Now, that commission paid on exchange, that one becomes an arable expense. Discount on bill purchased include, discount on bill purchased include interest and discount paid of that nine. We eliminate that. Provision for bad and out of debt include specific bad debt at the beginning and at the end of the year amounting to 68 and 140. So that one you look at the movement required. A statement showing the taxable profit or loss for my commercial bank for the year and that first December 2016. Then number two, the tax payable or refundable by bank. So how do we prepare that? So this is my commercial bank. Limited computation of taxable profit or loss for the year ended. So the year ends on that first of December 2016. So <clears throat> Oh, shillings are in thousands. So we start, we have said that this one is an incomplete record. Being an incomplete record, we start with the taxable income, then we raise ta uh, arable expenses. Uh -huh. So in a taxable income, we have the interest on adverses. Interest on adverses was an amount of 464,800. Also, we had the interest on government security. Interest on government security was an amount of 14,600. Uh, also, you have interest on placement. On placement and bank balances. An amount of 2660. Then we have gain on foreign exchange dealing. Gain on foreign exchange dealings. We had a gain of 1470. 
We had another income, discount on bill purchased. And you see, that's why I have been explaining each and every item. Eh? Discount on bill purchased was an amount of 329. But we are told that, now let's go to note number three. Discount on bill purchased include interest and discount paid of that nine. Include, you deduct that, that nine. So that means an amount was 290. Then you have general charge recovered. For the general charge recovered, it's an amount of 250. Then you had commission on exchange at brokerage. So the last item in the trial balance. Eh? Commission on exchange and brokerage. It's an amount of 784. So those are all the total taxable income. Then we raise allowable expenses. You raise allowable expenses. For the allowable expenses, what do we have? Number one, uh, we had operating lease rental. <coughs> operating lease rentals, an amount of 64, 80. Then we have interest paid on deposit. Interest paid on customer's deposit, an amount of uh, 47.40. What else? Also, we had loss on sale of collateral, loss on disposal of collateral, an amount of 840. Fees and commission expenses. And for the fees and commission expenses, it's an amount of 14.20. Losses from investment in security. We had that. Eh? Yeah, you see, we had losses. Uh huh. Here was that. So that one is a desirable expenses, eh? Yeah, the loss from investment in security. So that one is a desirable expenses, so you know that. Uh -huh. Then you also have exchange and commission paid. An amount of 48, eh? An amount of 48. Let's go to note number two. You are given in note number two. That including the transfer of subtle reserve is an amount paid for exchange and commission of 48. So that one becomes an allowable expense. Also, uh, we have... Uh -huh. Now, loss on stock brokerage. That one is not a uh, day-to-day operating activity. So even that one you have to ignore. Then we have interest and discount paid. That one you are given in note number two. Sorry, note number three. Discount on bill purchase include interest and deposit paid. Yeah, interest and discount paid. An amount of 39. Then we have all the tax remuneration. All the tax remuneration amount of 786. Mm-hmm. What else do we have? Uh, we also have bad debt. Now, for the bad debt, you only take the specific, the increase. Now, let's go to the last note. Provision for bad and doubtful debt include specific bad debt at the beginning of the year was an amount of 68, and at the end of the year was 140. You see, that increase or that change for the year is what we take it as an allowable expense. From 68 to 140, that means there was an increment of 72. That increase in provision for specific bad debt becomes a allowable expense. Then we have interest accrued and paid. 
Yeah, that was the amount of interest paid. We paid an amount of 1974. Then we have rebate <coughs> on bill discounted. Now, let me repeat again. Eh? Now, rebate on bill discounted, that one is not an income, it's an expense. Eh? It's not an income, it's an expense. Rebate on bill uh, discounted, an amount of <coughs> 292. And then, lastly, we have investment allowance. Investment allowance on equipment. Now, using the new rates, using the new rates, eh, the one provided on the first page of your question paper, we see that, <clears throat> you see this one is for the equipment. We see that all the equipment or all the machinery hmm, or furniture and fitting is at the rate of 10% reducing barra. So you'll take 10% of the value of the equipment. How much was the value of the equipment? The value of the equipment was 1,200. In your notes, I have used 12.5%. That was the old rate. Eh? So in this case, we are adjusting to the new rates. So it's 10% of 1,200, of which you'll get 120. An amount of 120. And that's how you get taxable profit. That's how you get taxable profit. You get an amount approximate to uh, 369,523. This one is not accurate. Eh? I'm just writing this amount. Eh? So this one you should not worry. So because I have made some changes, I don't have that answer. I don't waste. I don't have to waste time computing that. Eh? But that's an approximate amount. So in case now you have to determine the amount of tax payable or refundable, you take the tax rate 30 percent. You multiply by the taxable profit. Multiply by the taxable profit. So let me just write it as x, x, x. So actually this is what gives you your max, eh? the tax rate. So this one, because high chances you might get this one as a wrong answer. Eh? Because if you, try, uh, if you are not able to interpret one of these uh, adjustments here, that means your answer will be wrong. So you take 30% of the adjusted taxable profit, and that's how you get the amount of tax payable. Good. Uh -huh. So that's how we do taxation uh, of banks. So now let's do taxation of errands. Taxation of errands. So I want you to open with me May 2018 question 4A. May 2018 question 4A. So how do we tax errands? It's all about determining on how what are their major operating activities? Eh? Their day-to-day -day incomes. Eh? They get income from freights, cargo, all that. Eh? So let's do that question. May 2018, question 4A. And we are told that Jack Air Safari is limited, and then the notes for taxation of airlines, they are attached to the notes on the one for taxation of real estates or property development. We have that document. Eh? Where the first page is taxation of real estate and property development. Now, in those notes, on the last page, that's where you have the notes of the solution on the taxation of airlines. So that's where the notes are. So now let's go through that question. Jack Air Safari Limited is a foreign company yeah. operating a fleet of passenger and cargo freight uh, in Kenya, Middle East, and Far East. The operating result for the year ended 30th of September 2017 are as follows. Uh, so we have that. So we have income from cargo freight, income from passenger and freight, Kenya, Middle East, income from passenger and freight, South Korea uh, to Kenya, income from cargo loaded into aircraft on all routes, salaries and other expenses, accumulated depreciation on aircraft, general provision for bad debt. <coughs> Additional information. Salaries and other expenses include, number one, purchase of plane engine. Now a plane engine, that one is a capital expenditure. Now, for that capital expenditure, that engine will qualify for investment allowance at the same rate for the, uh, that are uh, aircraft. Eh? Then, use of airport facilities, hotel bills for first class passengers, accommodation for air and cruise, give to airport uh, staffs. Number two, the airline has a fleet of four aircraft whose total cost before accumulated depreciation was 360 million. Required. 
A statement of taxable profit, uh, taxable profit of Jet Air Safaris Limited for the year ended that year of September 2017. So how do we prepare that? So Jet Air Safaris Limited computation of taxable profit or loss for the year ended the year ends on 30th of September 2017 so our shillings are in thousand so in this case this one is a case of incomplete record being an incomplete record, therefore you need to determine the income, then you raise arable expenses. And for the income, number one, we have income from cargo freight, Kenya, China, an amount of 15, uh, 67, 720. Then we have income from passenger and freight. And freight from Kenya, Middle East, an amount of 1765. Also, we have income from passenger and freight, South Korea, Kenya. An amount of 1001800. Then we have income from cargo loaded into aircraft on all routes. Income from cargo loaded into aircraft on all routes, an amount of 630. Uh -huh. Then we raise, then we need to deduct expenses. We deduct arable expenses. For the expenses, let's start with salaries. Salaries and other expenses. Now for salaries and other expenses, what we just need, we just need to determine the amount of salaries. Now for the amount of salaries, you just take the balancing figure. You see, we are told that salaries and other expenses an amount of 15,000. But you are told that in note number one, salaries and other expenses include, number one, purchase of train engine. You deduct that, an amount of 117. You also deduct use of airport facility, that 2400. Hotel bills for first class passengers, that 7800. Accommodation for airline crew, an amount of 9000. Give to airport uh, uh, staff, 10800. Now, what I've done, I've taken the salaries and other expenses. Now, you deduct all other expenses to determine how much of the salaries are owned. So that's why I'm taking the balancing figure. I've taken the salary expenses, remove all other expenses to determine the value of uh, salaries, of which you'll get an amount of 134. Then you provide those other expenses on an individual basis. Uh -huh. So, in still at note number one, this is purchase of engine, therefore it qualifies for capital expenditure. That 2400 was use of airport facility. That's allowable expense. Use of airport facilities, an amount of that too, 400. Also, you have hotel bids for first class passengers. For first class passengers, that one is also a rubber expense, an amount of that seven, 800. Mm -hmm. Also, you had accommodation for air and crew. For airline crew, an amount of 9,000. Also, we had gift to airport uh, staffs. Yeah. If you give them, give that arable. It's a day to day operating activity, uh, expense. An amount of 10,800. Then we provide for investment allowance. Remember, depreciation is a disarable expense. 
So what we need is to provide for investment allowance. Now in this case, for investment allowance, we have on aircrafts, and then we have for that on plane engine. We purchased a plane engine. That one is a capital expenditure, which should be capitalized. So how much is for the aircraft? Now, can you go back to your, the first page of your question paper? The first page of your question paper, part B on machinery. Part B on machinery. On machinery, the third bullet, we have ships or aircraft. For the ship or the aircraft, it's 50% for the first year of use and then 25% of residual value on other year. So it's 50% for the first year. The original cost for aircraft, that one you are given in the last note, eh? and you are told that the value of aircraft before accumulated depreciation was an amount of 360. And then plane engine, the cost was 117,000. So you take uh, 50%. So this one would be an amount of 180. Uh -huh. And this one would be an amount of uh, 58,500. And that's how you determine the amount of taxable profit. Determine the amount of taxable profit. So let's compute that. So it will be 15. Uh, 67, 720, you add 17, 65, then you add, then you add 630, then you minus 134,000, that 2,400, that 7,800, 9,000, 10,800, 180, 58,500. You'll get an amount of uh, that. Eh? So that's the taxable profit I'm getting. So that's the taxable uh, profit. If I'm not wrong. Then how do you get the tax liability? How do you get the tax liability? Now, tax liability, you'll take can you read that question again? Let's read the first paragraph. Let's read the first paragraph. The first paragraph we're told that Jack Air Safaris Limited is a foreign company. A foreign company, therefore it's not a resident company. Foreign company will be taxed at 37.5% of your answer. 4502020. Yeah, the rate for the non-resident companies we said is at the rate of 37.5%. So, and that marks the end of that session.